Hello again, everybody. My name is Dr. Obbs, and this will be another aero analysis. Maybe for those of you that don't know who I am, I have a PhD in fluid dynamics, but mostly I'm just a motorsport fan and an aerodynamics fan. So we're going to go through this image from Xavi Gasquez, which came from the Bahrain Grand Prix of the Mercedes W15. So the Mercedes W15 is quite interesting. They've gone with a completely different concept or design for this year than they had for previous years, moving away from a zero pod concept or a minimal pod to more of a down washing side pod concept. Interestingly, the W15 has a P-shaped inlet, which we'll talk about, and quite a unique undercut forward uh, edge profile as well. So let's dive right into it. So if we start by looking at the Mercedes forward portion of the car, what we notice right away, if you just look at my laser pointer here, is the shape of the intake. Now, the shape of the intake is quite unique. It's also there on the Alpine A524 as well. But one thing to point out is just how slim this intake is on the most outboard side. Now, what I think that Mercedes is trying to do here is encourage more air from upstream to move into this undercut outwashing profile here and actually move its way down towards the floor edge. Now, if you minimize the intake volume on the outboard side, you have to find volume elsewhere. And they've done this by extending the intake by moving it further down along the monocoque. So one of the problems with moving that intake further down along the monocoque is you're going to have a lot of boundary layer flow along this monocoque. So boundary layer flow is just simply where the flow at the interface of the solid, so in this case, the monocoque along the wall, is slowed by the fact that there's friction and high shear along that surface. It just means that the energy along the surface is maybe not as energetic as it is further away from the surface. So for that reason, you are using some of this boundary layer flow but they're extending this a bit further down here, as you can see, so they're able to maximize their volume. So one of the things you need to do is ensure that all of the air that's coming upstream from this over the front suspension elements is not disturbed, especially at the junctions. So this is where the uh, suspension elements interface with the uh, nose cone. So typically at those junctions, it can be quite lossy. You can have horseshoe vortices, all different kinds of vortices that are generated from this junction. So you just need to have nice fairing profiles to ensure that, that flow is nice and clean. So I'm sure Mercedes has done that. Now, again, focusing on this forward undercut portion right here, what you can see is just how aggressively the undercut is leaning forward. So there's quite a lot of volume in this forward region right here, but you can actually trace out the profile as it moves outboard and see that they're also generating some outwash in this, in this forward undercut. So again, I talked about it in the RB20 analysis video that I did, but the whole purpose of this is to generally create a, a static pressure region. It's not actually static, you know, stagnation pressure, but it's, it's higher static pressure region in this forward floor top deck. So this is called the top deck right here, which just helps you to put some pressure on top of this. And then you have low pressure in this outwashing tunnels and you can generate some forward load. So this forward undercut is very important for that. But it's also important for getting air to the rear of the car, to the rear um, downforce generating elements, as well as getting some air to this rear um, uh, floor edge, which you see here, which is a detached floor edge, which also helps you to bring in some air into the rear diffuser volume, which helps with diffuser efficiency. So I did want to also talk about this most inboard strake that you see right here. So number two, you can see it's extremely inboard. It's very close to the monocoque. It's actually joining at the bottom side of the monocoque here. So this is just for me, Mercedes way of ensuring that the air that's coming in across this bib right here on the front is just very clean and protected. So there's no chance that any of the front tire wake in yaw or any of these weird sort of corner conditions is going to be disturbing the air that's coming into the forward floor because this is the only air that's actually feeding the whole tunnel system throughout the rest of the car now you can also see the rest of these uh, fences here so there should be four fences here but um you know i think one of those fences is just in this image hidden a little bit behind this sort of upward uh, extended uh, this would be the first fence. There would be a second fence just underneath the leading edge here, the third fence and the fourth, fourth fence here. 
so these outer fences are all outwashing fences and they're going to outwash the flow to this floor edge here in the forward floor edge and this is going to work in conjunction as i said before with the um, forward floor pressurization where you're going to naturally encourage the air that is coming over this leading edge of the floor and it's going to work its way down to the forward floor edge at least the air that does not go into the undercut and that's going to work in conjunction with this outwashing air to again generate a little bit of edge load here and help with extraction as well from these tunnels because it's there you can't really see it in this image very well there's a little small kind of gurney like um, feature right here along the edge and what this is actually doing is sort of working like a gurney on a front wing. It's going to help you again with more extraction like that, like it does on a rear wing. So looking here, you see uh, in kind of the mid floor region, you can see that there's a nice big fat curl. Uh, most teams are running these curls. Um, this, in my opinion, is just providing a bit of pressure support for the undercut. So think of it as you have all this air that's moving under the undercut like this, right? It's just sort of chasing areas where it's got least resistance, where it can move. Naturally, air moves through paths of least resistance. So the edge of the floor itself is very attractive to, to this undercut flow because uh, you have a lot of uh, low pressure along this floor edge here. So how do you combat that? You create a region where you have higher pressure, higher static pressure, and you do this by creating a curl like this. So any flow that is wanting to try to get to the edge and maybe leak out is just simply, um, you know, there's a, there's a, physical barrier here but but what that's doing is it's generating some cp or so coefficient of pressure here some generalized local pressurization which is also going to provide pressure support that's what we mean by pressure support so you have higher pressure here along this curl that's just going to kind of discourage the air from coming down and sort of encourage the air to keep moving back the other thing it's going to do is it's also going to generate a little bit of load because again pressure is load and downforce, so you've got some higher pressure here. Now, most other team, most teams are also running this little slot flow right here on the forward part of this curl. So the air that's coming over this top deck is going to be naturally entrained through this slot, and it, as it runs through this slot, it's going to hit these vortex generators, which are going to generate a lot of pressure on the top or on the forward front uh, face here. And then you're going to have lower pressure on the back face, which is going to encourage the air to now roll over that sort of delta wing shape that you have it's it's very well known these vortex generators and the physical phenomena behind them but you're generating small vortices and these small vortices are going to rotate and if you're looking from forward to back in this in the clockwise uh rotation so it's going to go like this all the way down the floor edge now what i don't know is if these vortices are going to be ingested into the floor along this edge and if it's going to create a little bit of edge load because the core of a vortex is low pressure or if these are simply just riding along the edge here and just trying to uh, discourage again any trash air you know front tire wake mess uh, from coming into the mid floor so if we look at the unique unique shape of the side pod as well here you can see that it's quite large in the mid span so if in the z direction straight up and down this way uh, about mid span you can see that the um, uh, side pod itself is quite large and bulbous and that's just to create a little bit of volume there so that any front tire wake that's coming through here which you know you've got this forward fence which is protecting the floor from that front tire wake but that's the low wake so that's kind of the tire squirt region you've also got a upper and a mid wake and so it's possible the upper and the mid wake may be combined this far downstream but generally there's a lot of localized disturbance from that and that disturbance is you know just going to latch on to any feature that it sees and in this way mercedes is giving it a feature it's giving it an outboard sideboard profile to latch on to and to just stay away from this nice clean flow they're trying to generate over the top of the side pod here which is ultimately this is a great shot is ultimately going to move back you can see all the space back here in the rear of the car where you're going to generate a lot of downforce so you're going to move the air over the top of the rear diffuser here and you're also going to interact with these uh, rear beam wings which are going to be generating um, 
uh, some some localized load, some downforce, but mostly you're going to be moving air along the side and over the top of the diffuser, which is going to help you with diffuser extraction. And that diffuser extraction is just going to pay dividends all the way through the body of the floor. So the floor itself is a complete system from forward to mid to back. So you really have to think of it that way. The quality of the air coming in through the floor, through this inboard tunnel, the size of the vortices and, and the, how, how those vortices persist as they move uh, through the body of the floor and the, as they interact with these outwashing fences. And then the amount of extraction you have in the diffuser is just going to essentially act like a hoover. It's going to pull all the air through the floor. So that's my analysis of the Mercedes W15. I just want to give a shout out to Xavi Gasquez, who sends us a lot of great photos. And this is just another great example of a great one. I hope you enjoyed this one. Be on the lookout for more analysis. Thanks so much for watching.